Um, Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Since we are virtual this evening, we're going to do a consent approval. So I will only be asking for no's to the votes on motions made. So if I could have a motion to approve the agenda, please. Beth Marielle, Campbell. I vote to accept and approve the agenda of the Board of Education meeting dated March 13th, 2023 as presented. Beth Campbell, second. Are there any nays? All those in favor? I mean, I'm sorry. Is there any members of the public who wish to address the board or submitted testimony for this evening's meeting? Hearing none, we'll move up to the approval of minutes. Can I have motions for these approvals, please? Do do we need to do them all separate? We do need to do them separately because they are separate meetings. Okay, Beth Campbell, um, I make a motion to vote to accept and approve the Thompson Board of Education regular meeting minutes dated February 13th, 2023 as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Are there any questions, corrections? Hearing none, are there any nays or abstentions? Okay, so moved to the second set. Beth Campbell vote to accept and approve the Thomson Board of Education residency hearing minutes dated February 15th, 2023 as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Questions or corrections? Any nays or abstentions? Okay, hearing none, motion carries. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the Thomason Board of Education residency hearing minutes dated February 15th, 2023, as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Questions or corrections? Are there any abstentions or nays? Hearing none, the motion carries. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the Thomson Board of Education residency hearing minutes dated February 15th, 2023 as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Questions or corrections? Abstentions or nays? Hearing none, the motion carries. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the Thomason Board of Education residency hearing minutes dated February 22nd, 2023 as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Questions or corrections? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the Thomason Board of Education special meeting minutes dated March 8th, 2023 as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Questions or corrections? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, 
Our February Rotary Student of the Month is Morgan LeClaire. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to thank you all for having me today. It is a great honor receiving this award. Most of you know who I am, and of course I know you because my grandma and mom have been a part of the Rotary Club for quite some time. Um, sorry. Observing my grandma and mom in the Rotary Club has allowed me to see that you guys focus on improving the town and community and the people that live here. Uh, this is why as soon as I started high school, I try to be as active as possible, whether it be in school or outside of school. In my extra extracurricular sports are my life, and I truly have soccer, baseball, and basketball. I've been on varsity teams for all three sports all four of my years at Thompson High School. Uh, this year, me and Connor Miller, uh, one of my best friends, were elected by our teammates and coached to be captain of the soccer team. Although we did not do as well as we would have hoped, we made it to the second round of states. Our first game in the States was one of the highlights of my career, not only because we won, but the setting we played in. The role of captain made me a better person because it allowed me to help people by directing them in the right path and constantly maintaining the athlete attitude sorry, of a role model. I'm currently playing basketball, and while injuries and illnesses, which I've dealt with during this season, have made things difficult, these obstacles have taught me not to give up, but instead to work harder and get back to where I was before all this happened. My parents and grandparents have taught me from a young age to work hard, and that will only benefit you. Outside of sports, I'm the vice president of class council, student council, and NHS, as well as treasurer for internet. The responsibility from each of these roles can sometimes be hectic, but I've learned to balance things out because throughout my life, I have managed multiple sports and schoolwork simultaneously. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I begged my dad and mom to let me ride the lawnmower and cut our grass at home, but they would always say next time, until this one time uh, when they let me sit with them and sit by myself. I was so excited and wondered why I would feel so amazed by cutting grass. I soon realized that it was, I wasn't amazed by cutting lawns as much as it was doing something that made me feel more independent. I learned how to do something that other people did not know how to do at such a young age. Ever since I was 13 or 14, my grandma allowed me to take care of her prop some of her properties. I took care of the lawns in the summer and shoveled the snow in the winters. It was fun because it allowed me to learn how to do more uh, tasks independently, and it also kept me active at the same time. Over this past summer, me and my friends started our own landscaping business, which allowed me to grow as a person and allowed me to have fun while working. One of my main goals in, goals in opening the business was to see if I could earn money and be independent outside of working for my family and their businesses. And I was able to do just that. Being independent at such a young age will only help me in the future. My mom always told me to do something I would enjoy in, as a career because she does not. <laughs> likely going to go into the military for a couple of years, at least until I figure out if that's what I want to do for the rest of my life, or perhaps pick up a trade while in the service until I have a better sense of what I want to do as long-term goal. No matter what I do, I know that I will, will work hard and will always have people in the community supporting me. Thank you for this honor. We offer our congratulations to Morgan and the rest of our February students of the month. From grade 11, Katerina Koloku, grade 10, Erti Shrepke, grade 9, Abigail Sedgwick, grade 8, Mackenzie Fair, grade 7, Brady Pram, grade 6, Zoe Kazachewski, grade 5, Aiden Wood, grade 4, Ivan Chen, grade 3, Cody Delan. Grade two, Ayana Bjorn. Grade one, Charlie Maliski. From kindergarten, we have Nico Settlinger. And from preschool, we have Mohammed Sheik. Morgan and all of these students were honored at the superintendent's breakfast in February. Moving on to our staff spotlight, Elisa Zapecki. 
Uh, she was unable to join us this evening, so we are going to celebrate her achievement next month. And moving on to our presentation, I will turn the meeting over to Ms. Badosky and Mrs. Nascimento. Good evening, members of the board, superintendent class, administrators, colleagues, and community stakeholders. Thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of our continued work in literacy, particularly in relationship to our curriculum and instruction at our primary level of students in grades K through three. As you are aware, the state of Connecticut passed legislation back in July requiring that reading instruction be based on the science of reading. Uh, the science of reading, generally speaking, is the body of work, including the study and research of how people learn how to read and write. It's not a one size fits all program. It's an approach or strategy. It's the acknowledgement that of all the science that is out there, how people will learn how to read. So in doing so, it makes educators think critically about how to teach students and if it's not a one size fits model, how do we adjust our teaching practices to meet the needs of our students? According to the state's bill known as the Right to Read Act, every school district in the state is required to focus on its reading curriculum geared towards the science of reading in grades K through three by the summer of 2023. School districts will need to implement one of five approved methods of teaching by July of this year. Schools will have to inform the State Literacy Center biannually of which program they are using from a list of approved programs that they have vetted until 2027. So this mandate has brought upon some interesting discussions because as I said earlier, that the science of read reading isn't one size fits all. So districts have to purchase any one of these programs to use solely as SOR approved is really contradictory to the fact that good reading instruction comes from many various strategies, approaches, and is supplemented with programs. Feedback from districts all over the state have questions that since the science of reading is not a one size fits all program, that would be better served if districts could make their own literacy decisions for their collective students based on specific data and what they need. Thus, the state went back and has allowed districts at this point to have the option to submit a waiver to use a different teaching model in which this is what Mrs. Badowski and I have submitted on behalf of the town of Thomaston. So what does this mean for Thomaston? Through our work on this waiver in the examination and knowledge of the science of reading compounded with our current instructional materials, teaching practices, and student data trends, we feel that our programming and instruction follows the evidence and scientific-based focus of SOR competency in the following areas of reading. Next slide, please. So oh, back one, please. So research says that the science of reading is based on five big ideas. We have our phonemic awareness, the ability to identify and play with individual sounds and spoken words, phonics, reading instruction and understanding how letters and groups of letters link to sound to form letter sound relationships and spelling patterns, our fluency, the ability to read words, phrases, sentences, and stories correctly with enough speed and expression, vocabulary, knowing what words mean and how to say and use them correctly, and comprehension, the ability to understand what we are reading. So using all of what we know about the science of reading, Thomas and Public Schools meets the criteria of the SOR in grades K-3 through our grade level curriculum. Tegrity, which is a program that adjusts to phonemic awareness for our students. Foundations addresses our phonics. Our ready reading program, which also addresses phonics in addition to phonemic awareness, vocabulary, and comprehension. Using guided reading and targeted small group intervention. The SOR has determined that structured literacy instruction is most likely to work best for the majority of students when all of these things are in place. When we use these programs in K, grades K through three, we know that we have met evidence of the big five in the SOR. We work collaboratively and intentionally to move our students to address any achievement gaps in literacy, which will be discussed by Mrs. Badosky on the next slide. Thank you, Pam, for, um, for all that hard work. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Jessica Badowski, and I'm the Director of Curriculum and Instruction. And uh, Pam and I have worked uh, quite a bit um, on the Science of Reading waiver that was submitted on February 28th. 
on behalf of the Thomaston Public Schools. At this time, we have not heard any uh, further feedback from the state. We are not sure if they are going to um, give everyone who applied for a waiver. We are not sure if they are going to just dismiss the whole legislative law on the science of reading. Um, we do know that the superintendents are working rigorously to say, if our reading data uh, is successful, then please leave us alone because our kids are growing and reading in the areas that, that basically in the competencies that uh, we expect of them. So, um, so that's a whole other discussion, but I just wanted to uh, let you all know in the next slide, we have, um, we're able to fill out the science of reading waiver and all of our columns K3, which I, I gave additional information just because the uh, similar colors are cohort groups. And so that is the same group of students year to year, but the science of reading waiver is only for K3, not for K6. And um, in addition to that, uh, all of our um, uh, submitted data concluded to the state that we were non not applicable. And what that means is that we did not have significant numbers of students who were not reading at their grade level. The state is looking to, with this legislation, focus on districts who have a huge number of students um, when they get to grade three, not reading at grade level. Thomaston has a spreadsheet that says non-applicable in all grades due to our data. And they had me drill down uh, to specific students, um, EL students, IEP students. Um, they disaggregated by race, by um, uh, ethnicity, and by gender. So they really looked at all students and where they were in reading. And uh, we we have a clean bill of health, so to speak. Not that all of our students are where they should be, but we don't have the numbers that they're looking for in order to uh, force legislation on our district. So just looking quickly at the data, uh, we're noticing um, the same group of students in kindergarten um, are growing. As you see in spring of 2022, 64% are reading at grade level. And the last column is not color coded because those are our winter scores. So some, uh, some grade levels, for example, the one that I just uh, mentioned uh, in the sort of um, maroon color, uh, in winter of 2023, they are already at where they were in the spring. So we expect more growth um, when we test them again this spring of 2023. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but if you look at, you know, our grade two kiddos, um, again, growing in spring of 2021, took a little dip in 2022, but already are back at the 55% for winter of 2023. So our goal is to have um, all of our students grow and, uh, and, and continue to show the growth uh, that we know they are capable of. So if anybody has any questions, this is, would be a great time. And I just wanna thank again, the teachers, um, our paraprofessionals, our coaches, our interventionists that, you know, they work tires, tirelessly um, with individual students one-on-one, -on -one, with small group students, um, with teachers, so that we can use our resources. The iReady is not our curriculum, it's a resource, it's a program that we use in addition to Hegarty that Pam mentioned and several other curriculum uh, documents. And so these instructional coaches work tirelessly to make sure that teachers have all the resources they need, that they're looking at individual uh, cohort of students, making sure that they're growing, making sure that um, we are basically abiding by the science of reading prior to the state even telling us that. We did, we did not need for them to tell us that those were the five big ideas of reading. Our reading specialists were already implementing that. So it's very encouraging um, to know that we have a very high caliber of reading instruction here in Thomaston.
Okay, thank you very much, Jessica and uh, Pamela. We appreciate that information and thank you for your work. Moving on into our student representatives report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for academics, the mid-marking period took place on March 3rd, 2023. Students are preparing for the PSATs, SATs, and the SBAC testing to begin at the end of March. A lot of our seniors are hearing back from colleges and decisions are slowly being implemented and our graduates are excited to make the next steps forward after THS. For clubs, Business Club hosted a middle school activity night where middle schoolers had the choice between watching movies, do doing karaoke, and playing in the gym. This increases student participation and gets kids' school spirit to a higher level. The Women in STEM Club is hosting a talent show on March 24th. The Hiking Club will meet on March 25th. On March 31st, Student Council is hosting, hosting a disco fever themed dance. Everyone is seeking participation as we continue the second half of the school year. And if I can add, um, National Honor Society is having a blood drive on Wednesday, and we're still looking for participants. If any board members or anyone in the public is listening and wants to sign up, you can sign up on the Red Cross app. Um, for athletics, the wrestling and boys basketball season came to an end. The boys basketball team ended with a record of 6-14, to 14, uh, 6 wins, 14 losses. And the wrestling co-op team ended with notable matches from our Thomason wrestlers. The girls' basketball team ended their regular season 17 wins and three losses. The girls, we want to congratulate the girls on winning the BL title along with winning the BL tournament championship. The girls made it past the first two rounds of states with amazing wins. However, we sadly lost in the quarterfinal game last Wednesday. Spring signups are taking place at with THS offering track and field, baseball, softball, and tennis. Spring sports can have their first practices this Saturday, but tomorrow's snowstorm may push back um, many coaches' start dates to Monday, March 20th to let the snow hopefully melt. All right, and for special events, as stated before, SATs for juniors and PSATs for sophomores are on March 23rd. Teen Talks are on March 17th. And lastly, the Student of the Month Breakfast is on March 31st. This caps off special events for the month of March. Thank you, Delaney and Nathan. Uh, just a note, my chairperson's report is as presented our progress report on our goals for both the board and the superintendent has been updated for the month of March. And um, the Ed Advance Board of Directors um, has some more information regarding the new purchases and programs being offered there. So I will turn it over to Mrs. Koss for her report. Thank you, Roxy. This is Francine Koss speaking. Um, the first section of my report, I do want to take a moment to highlight um, item 10.1.1.6. Uh, thank you letters were sent to our students um, from the LEAP program um, at Center School for their presentation last month. And on the next slide, there is a video follow-up uh, to give you a status update. Don't hear the audio, so thank you. I am here to represent the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders of our LEAP program at Thomason Center School. The testimony is longer than what I'm going to uh, present now, uh, but I hope that you take a look at it because there is a fantastic photograph that illustrates exactly what I'm going to be talking about. So thank you very much, my uh, esteemed members of the Education Committee for allowing me to testify today. My testimony is presented in support of incorporating the language of proposed House Bill 6030 into House Bill 6842. They have a similar background and theme. The Thomaston Center School Learning Enrichment Academic Program, also known as LEAP, those students who are in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, presented a bill proposal to Representative Piscopo related to posting nutritional information on school breakfasts and lunches. 
to allow students to make better choices about eating. Representative Piscopo was very excited and supported this proposal by um, introducing a bill, Bill 6030, um, on January 18th, and it soon went to the Joint Committee on Education. On February 8th, our LEAP students were guests of Representative Piscopo, and they visited this building as well as the Capitol. And when they were here, they visited the LOB cafeteria where they found a binder in the cafeteria with all of the nutritional information available to every legislator that eats in that cafeteria as well as every guest. And they were ecstatic because this is exactly what they're asking for in their school. Something that can be placed in a stationary location near where they eat so that they can go and make decisions about the food that they're eating, what is on the menu. Um, and I will uh, let you know that building a menu in a school is um, part of building that menu is looking at the nutritional information. So it's rather handy. And this is not a heavy lift for anybody. It's not an unfunded mandate because no funds would need to occur. I'm, I'm highlighting that most especially for you, Representative Howard. Um, and our school lunches repeat frequently, either um, over the course of a month, of course, across the course of a year, or sometimes our favorites go up twice in one week. So if we were to post the nutritional values once, it would cover the entire year's worth of meals and it would satisfy what the children are asking for in their proposed bill 6030. So in conclusion, what I'm asking for is that you combine the one sentence that is all of 6030 and put it into an amended version of House Bill 6842 to support what the students in our LEAP program have proposed to Representative Piscopo. Thank you, and thank, thank you. you for your testimony. I think Representative Piscopo just dropped us off some information and left us here and left you there by yourself, unfortunately. Yes, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hi, thank you for coming today. I find this interesting, not because Representative Piscopo just dropped us off, mm -hmm. but there was a bill the other day about uh, wanting restaurants to label what's in their food because kids have allergies and we had a whole hearing on it. So this to me is kind of what you're saying. So if it's if we're making restaurants and everybody do it, why shouldn't our schools do it? Because the children that testified ate at both places. And if the LOB is posting, and if the LOB, I never knew it was, but I don't look for that stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Representative Piscopo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Chairman McQuarrie. Good to see you. Vice Chair Curry. Uh, I mean, uh, Chairman Curry, uh, Vice Chair uh, Leeper, um, members of the committee, thank you very much for having me. And, uh, and staff, you've got a great uh, a great staff here. Uh, they've been very helpful. Rosalie was great. They are. <laughs> so uh, I want to uh, thank them too for their help. Um, our, my superintendent uh, covered it very well. She just came up a couple of uh, people before me. And um, and thank you for allowing me to speak on your House Bill 6842. And to humbly ask if you would consider merging um, the proposed Bill 6030 into this bill. It, it's uh, definitely germane. And it's a quick four line bill. It just it just um, requires the posting of nutritional value of foods at the school cafeterias. Um, I I am enthusiastic about it, like my superintendent said, but I didn't start out that way. I was going down when I spoke to their to meet meet the class. I was going to go try and as diplomatically as I can, lit them down, saying I don't know. This sounds it's very well intentioned, but it sounds like a mandate, an unfunded mandate. And they educated me on this bill and and the way it would work. The vendors that actually deliver to the schools have all this information right there because they have to post it at so many other institutions, private businesses and high and higher education. They, are, they all have to post all their nutri nutritional values. So it just makes sense to do it in our local schools. So I, uh, I thank you for your consideration in advance and I, um, and I appreciate you giving me the time. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman and Vice thank Chair Leeper. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions for our colleague? 
Go easy on me. Oh, <laughs> Rep 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 oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my my question is: This is a posting of nutritional values. It is not a posting of potential allergens. Correct. Correct. Yes, it's just for nutritional values, um, calories, fat. Right there. Um, and you can compare the corn dog to the bok choy. Yeah. You know, kind of. Kind of like you're at McDonald's <laughs> yes. or not. <laughs> Thanks. Um, other questions? I think this is something that we can um, accommodate. I think they, like you said, they are both germane, and I think this is something that this committee can can work together to make happen. I appreciate your testimony. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. So that is the update, as you can hear uh, toward the end there with uh, Senator McCrory, who is the co-chair of the Education Committee. It is his intention to move forward with integrating bill 6030 the bill that was uh, proposed by senator uh, representative piscopo and presented to him by our leap students and incorporating that into the bill that is um that still has some traction which is the bill that was being heard that particular day so that is exciting news uh, the next part of my report uh is as as it lists there uh some correspondence from local um, and state and U.S. groups. Next slide, please. Uh, there are also some reports that have been included in, in my overall report, as well as some contracts. Um, we have no new grants this month. We do have a, a good number of, we have nine fundraising follow-up forms. We're very happy to receive those. We also have uh, five new approved fundraisers and uh, no denied fundraisers. Next part of my report is on personnel. You can see we have three new hires, uh, four transfers or new assignments, four reassignments, uh, one resignation, and one stipend. At this time, I would like to ask the board to acknowledge my notification of personnel, specifically those listed above. Beth Campbell makes a motion to vote to acknowledge a superintendent's notification of personnel, specifically yes. new hires, transfers, retirements, resignations, renewals, stipends for policy, 4112, 4212 personnel certified, non-certified appointment, and conditions of employment as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Any questions? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Superintendent Koss, you can continue. Thank you, this is Superintendent Koss speaking. The remainder of my report has uh, two uh, main sections, well, inclusive of two others that show no new information, which is part of personnel. But we're, I'm going to be asking the board to approve two field trips. I don't have any um, new information on anyone requesting the sale or disposal of books or equipment. So going back to field trips, I'm asking the Board of Education to approve the field trip to Bloomberg Tower and Discovery Studio in New York City, which will happen in May, as well as the Bronx Zoo trip, which will happen for the class of 2025 in April. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the Bloomberg Tower and Discovery Studio New York City field trip as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Any questions or concerns? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the Bronx Zoo field trip as presented. Marie Eldridge, second. Any questions? Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to our committee reports. Since Todd is with us this evening, I will let him present the uh, Budget Audit Committee's Business Manager's Report, if you would please.
Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so our budget table uh, without encumbrances shows us at 60.05 expended. Uh, last year at this time, we were 61.09% expended. Our February expenditures are 1,577,273.20. Our budget table uh, with encumbrances shows us at 67.36 expended. Last year at this time, we were 66.55 expended. Um, our grants, uh, the grants that end June 30th, 2023 are 49.41 expended. Grants that end June 30th, 24 are 44.2% expended for a total of 45.9. So uh, the grants that end June 30th, 23, I'll be working with administrators and we'll definitely get those spent by the end of June. Um, our projection shows us a deficit of 106,291. It has improved since the last time we spoke. We've had some uh, special ed students that have changed outplacements or have moved out of district. Uh, we have some open positions that we filled um, with current staffing. So uh, those aren't uh, expended. Again, until today, till tomorrow, the snow was uh, doing pretty well, but we'll see how that goes. But um, so uh, the deficit is at 162, 106.291. Uh, we do not have any transfers for February. And uh, that's all I have, unless you have any questions. Can I have a motion regarding this report? Yeah, Todd, I have one question. This is Maria. Marie, can we get the motion first, please? Well, I wanted well, to ask about the report, so I didn't want to make a motion to approve it till I ask about it. The process is to make a motion to approve it, get a second, ask the questions, and then you can decide whether you're going to vote to approve it or not. Thank you. Beth Campbell, vote to accept and approve the business and finance report and expenditures per policy 3432, 3433, Business Non Instructional Operations Budget and Expense Report Annual Financial Statement as presented for February 2023. Marie Eldridge, second. Now you may ask your questions. Thank you. I'm just curious specifically between January's report of $302,000 deficit, and now we're down to 106. We made up quite a bit in a month. Um, is there anything that's really big that's outstanding so the, uh the big change was the special ed students that we thought were being going to be out that were outplaced that moved into district or changed outplacement so uh those are some big figures and we did have some um positions that we filled with open positions so we didn't have to rehire those so those are the two main changes um again the, the uh our overtime for Custodians, I'm projecting that to, to slow down a little bit with no more basketball games, the park and rec. And again, uh, weather related, hopefully uh, will slow down a little bit. So that overtime has gone down. So those are the probably the three big areas that it, have made the change from the prior month. Um, again, it's very ever changing. We met with ESS, our new uh, sub uh, company that's gonna help us get our subs and um, you know, they were confident that they could pick up our subs that we, you know, every day we have empty. So again, it's a good thing, but I, financially it will it'll, it'll cost us more money. So I'm waiting to see uh, how that plays out. But again, it's uh, at this time, I think it's a good projection. Thank you. You're welcome. And Dave, call what are we? Dave Kovacchio, what are we doing to uh, get rid of the remaining $106,000? Because, you know, as state law says, at the end of the day, the, the Board of Education is, is, is responsible for overages. Um, at the, uh, you know, it's never come to that, obviously, but uh, um, I don't feel comfortable coming in $100,000 over. So, as you know, Dave, we did put on a, a spending freeze. Um, so it's only education related programs that are being approved. Um, we do have the 2% account uh, balance in there. 
that I know, you know, we're hoping that insurance companies covers a lot of the costs for Black Rock and Center School. Um, so if that's the case, we could use some of that to offset the, the, the uh, deficit. So again, we'll do, do what we can to try to, to, to eliminate that. Dave, this is Francine speaking. We also, uh, I also instituted a hiring freeze. So any vacant position would either have to be backfilled by someone who's already employed by us or it would remain vacant. Um, the last hire uh, was a substitute custodian, which could also assist with reducing overtime hours because we are still short one custodian um, in one of the buildings right now. Are there any other questions? Are there any nays or abstentions? Dave Kovic, you will nay. Hearing no others, the motion passes. Moving on to our policy committee report. Matt, you're taking this, please. Hi, this is Matt Van Ormer to report on the policy committee meeting we had earlier today. Um, that is my baby wanting to chime in. Um, let's see. Uh, we had a presentation from Gianni. Um, and then uh, we're going to keep um, go to the motion first. All right. Um, uh, I move that the policy committee proposed amendments to policy 1330 and the associated forms be permitted for fast tracking by a two thirds vote of the members present at tonight's board of education meeting. Can we get a second? Dave Kalbeck, you will second. And the reason that we are asked, oh, I'm sorry. Are there any nays or abstentions? No, but I had a question. Go ahead. Um, just, uh, so I know the policy committee got the presentation from Gianni. Will, will the policy be, committee be giving us an update on that? Or is it just the changes that are in the the copies of it's the policy. Just the changes in the copies when Gianni presented it to us today. Okay. Um, and so we're just fast tracking to implement it because they're minor changes. And uh, Gianni has already um, notified the athletic department that he was proposing the changes um, and they're minor. But if you guys ever want to see the presentations, policy committees meetings at five. And these are also linked to the board agenda. So you can look at them if you're not able to attend the policy subcommittee. And well, what, what, when I clicked in the presentation, it just has the marked up copy. Yes, Beth, this is Francine speaking. That was the presentation he presented, the marked up copy. And the reason why fast tracking is important with this is because on the form, um, the changes made there actually list the district custodian or the um, building custodian's cell phone number. And we wanna get that information out to our own staff, as well as the people um, who utilize our facilities. So the sooner we get that out there, the better. Um, so that if we have any emergencies that occur after hours, they'll know how to reach our staff. Thank you. Are there any nays, any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. 
Hi, Matt Vinomer. I move to accept and approve the changes to policy 1330 and the associated forms as presented. Dave Kalecki will second. Any questions regarding this? I would like to explain, this is Francine speaking, I would like to explain to those who are at home watching that the reason why we have to make two motions is we have to first get permission from the board to fast track, and then we have to make the actual motion to accept the policy change. So that's why there are two separate motions on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, and just Matt Van Orme, I'm gonna just finish up with our policy committee meeting. Um, we had no first reads. Um, we did a second read on policy 6140, um, which is the curriculum by Jessica Badowski, um, which we will move into an action item next month. And I think that's it. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Dave Kalvick, you'll make a motion to adjourn. Matt Van Omer, second. Hearing no nays or abstentions, the meeting is ended at 747. Thank you all for attending and have a good night. Stay safe. Thank you.